tells me you mother can't move in the back. Okay. All right? Okay. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here anyway, and uh, among such exalted uh, people here, and uh, I'm just going to do a presentation about home brewing. Now, home brewing is the part of uh, QRP that I am particularly interested in. And you can see there on the slide, uh, I'm going to introduce myself formally. Well, not formally, but I'll introduce myself anyway. And there's two parts to the build that I'll be uh, covering. A small QRP 40 meter CW transmitter project. And that's the, it was mentioned earlier, the tuna tin. And I've lifted the circuit uh, from the uh, website and I've built it uh, in my own design. And this is the actual build. But uh, I can show you that later in, in detail. But uh, then I'm going to cover, you've heard a few mentions earlier of the QCX. But I have a QCX, the mini QCX. I've built several QCXs, but the latest one is the QCX mini. And I have a 20 meter uh, version, which is down as well on the, on the stand that I have. So. After that, if there's any questions and answers, uh, we'll deal with them, and uh, hopefully. So, first of all, a little bit about myself. Tony Branaki, I5EM, QTHR is Dublin, and you have my contact details there, anyone that wants to contact me. Uh, when I was a young kid, uh, even before I mentioned 1966 there, but my dad, uh, who was born in 1910, he, was, uh, he would have been a builder in the 1920s and 30s. I remember him telling me about straight trees and all the different types of radios that he built from kits. But we lived in Clonliffe Road in Dublin in a flat, and uh, he used to send in requests to some of the shortwave radio stations. Uh, for musical requests, and then we'd sit by the radio waiting to see would a request be played. And if they were, we were just in pure heaven. But 1966, I built my first radio, which was the HAC Regenerative Receiver Single Valve. And HAC stood for Hear All, or, Hear All Continents, and I did. And uh, I, I persevered with that. I built a, uh, a Philips uh, electronic kit and added that to it for, so that I didn't have to listen to the very, uh, the, uh, you know, high, high uh, impedance phones, which was, a, you know, a bit of a problem uh, if you were listening for a long time. Uh, then, I became a CBer, and there's another person in the audience here who was also a CBer, and I won't, uh, I won't name him, but uh, he knows who he is. But that was around 1977 when the uh, when the when the CB craze hit, and I was known as the C Knight. Now it was an unfortunate name I picked as a handle, because some people used to say to me, "Why do you call yourself C Nile?" <laughs> But it was too late to change. Then, as the sunspot cycle uh, started to go down, uh, I decided it was time to get the call sign. So I got the first call sign was a B call sign, EI6AEB. And uh, then in 1981, I passed uh, the 12 words a minute and EI5EM. I joined the QRP club, I'd say about 1982 or thereabouts and my membership number there, 3347. Uh, I was checking the, the book there earlier. There's three, three numbers previous to me uh, in, in the sign-in book. Anyway, uh, QRP, CW, home brewing, and portable operation, and SOTA, that's my interests. And in 2003, I set up EI0MAR, which is in the Vintage Radio Museum in Hoth. And uh, I'll give it a plug towards the end of the, the, uh, the presentation. Uh, 
Where's that in there next? Go back there. You can see you can see me there in the uh, the middle picture there, a very young uh night as I was then with the uh lot more hair then than I have now. But anyway, we'll move on. And the question, I remember George used to say this, why bother to build at all? You know, and I can't emulate George, you know, he was, George was George, but from my own point of view, it's fun and enjoyable, educational, great sense of achievement. Now that doesn't mean that everything I tackle works for his time, but uh, we won't say too much about that. Let's say I've, uh, I've a well-stocked junk box, I'll leave it at that. Uh, it's a skill to be proud of, and after all, the hobby is supposed to be one of self-training, and this is an ideal way to self-train. Uh, keeps the mind active, and for QRP powers, uh, building equipment, it's, it's inexpensive and achievable. Uh, we saw the pixie earlier, and uh, you know when you look at that, uh, uh, the price of it and uh, the performance, admittedly, with the, with, the, with the filter. And there are lots of excellent QRP kits available. And it also inspires to build further and uh, do more. Now, the first one is a, it's, it's a practical project. So I was racking my brain when I was invited here. What will I do? I could easily have just re you know, brought up something I'd built previously. So I said, I said, no, I'll do something specifically for uh, the presentation. So it's the Tuna Tin 40 meter CW transmitter. You saw it earlier on another presentation. And uh, I'm going to demonstrate the build from start to finish. I built my own boards there. It's a kind of a, a surface mount. Uh, I etched the board and the, uh, the, the paths, etc. Uh, an advantage of this is that it lends itself to easy fault finding because there's nothing on the other side of the board. It's just, uh, and if you want to mount it as well, I have two little bits of uh, blue tack here, but you can also use impact adhesive. Uh, I don't use any of the expensive uh, markers that are on the market. I just use, a, you can see the marker there, uh, the, uh, I think it cost me one, one euro fifty in deals. It's just a permanent marker. Uh, I etched the PCB board and then I removed the ink. That's the, the, the short of it. But anyway, there is, he was mentioned earlier, the great Doug DeMaw. W1FB, who ranks alongside uh, George, uh, T3RJV, and I've lifted his design uh, for the tuna tin uh, too. And I, as I said, I, I didn't duplicate his circuit board. I just uh, did my own thing there. So. Uh, there's the circuit, without going into too much detail. Uh, you can see on the left there's a crystal oscillator uh, using a 2N2222 uh, transistor. Then that's followed by another 2N22. And then I have the, uh, the impedance uh, transformer and the, the, the output filter. And that's it. And you can see the, uh, the key as well. It's easily keyed. No problem at all. So that's the circuit itself. Now, I didn't want to just copy the board from the tuna tin, uh, so I decided to build, uh, do my own. And this was my first sketch. I just sketch an outline of what I hope will be the, uh, you know, it's just a, guide, a guideline for uh, the eventual uh, printed circuit board. So it gives me a rough idea of where I need to. And one of the things I try to do is not have any uh, bridges. I try to make the, the circuit board without any bridges or uh, wire, wire uh, jumpers. There's the, 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 the copper 
which is lightly sanded there. And uh, you can see the uh, marker. I've it bears some resemblance to the sketch in the previous uh, uh, clip, but uh, and I used just a permanent marker there to uh, to mark out where the uh, tracks are. Uh, I know some of you will be familiar with the uh, etching process, but ferric chloride solution. And the idea behind that is the exposed copper will be eaten away, leaving the tracks which have been covered in the uh, permanent marker. And you can see in the bottom one there, uh, the bottom uh, photograph, uh, the circuit board is uh, immersed in the ferric chloride, which is agitated from side to side. And uh, it's like developing a photograph. And uh, eventually, uh, what comes out is, uh, there's the board. Uh, you can see the copper remains and uh, you can see the, where the, uh, the copper has been eaten away. So that's the, uh, and it was a good, it was a good etching. Uh, they're freehand, I draw them freehand and uh, okay. I've got comments and I've got criticisms that it's not a, it's not a very artistic or not a very scientific, but it works for me and it's QRP and I say to people, it works, look there's the demonstration. Right, there we are, I, I, I populated the board and uh, you can see there I fitted, uh, I fitted a push button there as a, as a Morse key and uh, I have an SO239 socket there for the antenna. Uh, the top right photograph there is the crystal oscillator, which is 7.023 megahertz. I didn't, for simplicity, I didn't put any VXO. I didn't want to change the filter or, or change the crystal. I just wanted it to keep it simple. And you can see there the uh, the uh, four to one uh, transformer and the low pass filter. Now the next slide here. Uh, this uh, and I, I'm going to show some videos of it. Uh, for some reason, the sound isn't synced with the perfectly with the uh, video. So just forgive me for that. Uh, okay, hang on. We go back again. Right, you right? And it's a nice clean signal there, there's no sign of any chirp. You can see the little delay there on the, on the, uh, And we'll move on there. There's the output power calculation. I'm not going to go through the maths of it there, but it works out at roughly uh, uh, a half a watt, 500 milliwatts. I'm applying uh, RMS values and Ohm's law and all that. But there you go. Anyway, it's a lot. It's an, I was very pleased with the uh, with the signal. Uh, this is now just trying a, C, a, a, a CQ call. And uh, as I said, again, it's out of sync, uh, the sound, but just... I'm monitoring on my 7300, and it's given me the side tone as well, but uh, the, the TX is the... Is Okay, we'll go to the next one. Um, now, Tony, I, I, I asked Tony EI6K uh, to monitor my signal, uh, see what it was like. Now, Tony's not too far away from me. Uh, he also put on his Morse decoder there, and uh, we'll let you see that now.
Oh, go back. And you can see there the Morse has been uh, decoded. Okay, that's the end. And I decided, I said I'll be brave and I'll see how far my signal is going. So I went in on the Hack Green uh, online SDR site and uh, I sent, uh, I said, no, the chances, I probably haven't much of a chance in hell, but I'll give it a go. So here was the result. You can hear my key clicks and the delay, uh, the transmission delay coming back over the internet. But I'm clearly audible there. So uh, that, would, that, that, that gave a great sense of satisfaction that I, I was getting out that far. Uh, that's kind of just, uh, it's the, I, I, I added a few things after I was happy uh, with it. I, I put connectors for the key and for the uh, for the voltage, uh, 12 volt in. And I also, you can see the bottom right, uh, a diode protection for reverse polarity. Uh, moving on there, I'm going to leave the, the fully homebrew and I'm going to go on to the QCX or kit building in general. But the, the, the rig that I'm uh, I'm concentrating on is the QCX Mini, which I have on the, the, the stand down below. But kit building is a great way to get into home construction. It's a great introduction because you get all the components and the instructions are supplied. And for the better kits, I know there was mention earlier about, uh, you know, some kits not having proper documentation, etc. But there are support, support groups available for uh, most of the popular uh, kits. Now, the important thing is not to be too ambitious, uh, you know, to pick a kit that suits your skill level. And uh, Les there mentioned the, uh, uh, the uh, little uh, pixie. Like that, that's an ideal starter kit, uh, in my opinion. There are lots of other things, but there's, there's ATUs, there's filters, there's lots of things. You don't have to go straight into transmitters and receivers. And as I say, order from reputable suppliers. There are a lot of kits out there that will disappoint. So uh, I, I'll emphasize that. And when constructing, don't dive in. Take care. Read the instructions. Reread the instructions. Make sure you're putting the right components in the right holes because once in, some of, some of them are difficult, particularly ICs, uh, to uh, get out. And uh, tiredness can lead to mistakes. So uh, that's, I've learned that from bitter experience. Read and reread instructions before proceeding. Check, recheck, and each component before uh, putting, putting it in place. Now, I'm going to uh, move on to the QCX itself. Uh, it's a fantastic rig, less than 100 euro, or what's that, about 80, 80, 85 pound or thereabouts. Uh, I built an external uh, audio amplifier using the LM386 uh, chip and uh, because the kit only has, obviously it's a mini so there's no room for uh, speakers and that. They come in single bands, uh, so you, when you're ordering 
uh, you order uh, whatever band you want. Uh, as I said, I built the 14 megahertz version. It's not a beginner's kit. I have to uh, emphasize that a lot of the components are uh, surface mount. All the resistors are surface mount. All the ICs are surface mount. So the builder has to fit the capacitors, uh, a few transistors, and all the external controls, like volume controls and uh, uh, push buttons and that. So uh, let's just move on from that. It has memory keying as well. And it has a good decoder. And uh, you, you can see at the bottom there, it's QRP Labs. And I, I, I'm not advertising for QRP Labs. I'm just recommending them as one of the fantastic kits and value for money. There's how the uh, kit arrived. Uh, now, I bought a few extra bits and pieces. I bought the AGC board, and I also bought the uh, uh, the uh, TCXO, you know, for stability. And you can see the top one there. Uh, the QRP Labs, the, 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 the big uh, bag on the right, it's common to all, all of the kits. But you can see the 20 meter low pass filter up at the top. So when you order a kit, you get a separate uh, bag uh, for the uh, for whatever band you ordered it. Right, uh, there's now I fit I, I, at that at that stage I'd fit at the uh, uh, the receiver the uh, uh, toroid, but you can see there the uh, all the all the ICs are are are, are uh, fitted uh, and a big big thing about the, the, the toroid is you must make sure that uh, all the insulation is burnt off. Uh, Hans says that over half the number of kits that he gets for repair are people haven't actually burnt off the insulation or scraped off the insulation from the toroid. I'm going to show you now the underside. Uh, you can see there's there's one uh, there's one uh, I see there, and you can see, I'm not sure if it's clear enough, but you can see the surface mount devices there as well. As I said, all the, all the, uh, all the capacitors are through hole, but the, uh, the resistors and the IC is our surface mount. Okay, there's the completed kit. And all the test gear is on board for setting up the radio. And you can see the three uh, you can see the three potentiometers there in the middle. That's all re that's required with the menus to set up the uh, the receive section. Uh, the hardest component is the large toroid, and that's what what people have diff difficulty with. And uh, with a bit of patience and uh, you know uh, care it can be uh, installed. I won't say without difficulty because you've got, you've got four coils there. So you've eight, eight, eight ends, you've eight ends of uh, enameled wire and they have to all be, they all have to go into the correct uh, through hole uh, connections and be soldered. And as I say, they have to be soldered and metered out to make sure that they're actually making contact. And that's what I refer to the uh, the large coil in the in the middle there with the four windings. Uh, the other toroids there are quite simple because they're just single windings. They're they're not transformers. They're just inductors. There is uh, the display board. All that has to be fitted on the display board is the uh, the, uh, the top left hand side. Uh, potentiometer and then the the bottom is the control board the switches and the, 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 the there's a rotary encoder and a volume control there but anyway moving on there is the, the kit assembled 
ready to be put in the uh, in, in in the case there. Uh, it's very it's very tight to fit in the case. It's uh, let's say I had to file out the uh, aperture for the BNC connector when I had it fitted, but. Uh, uh, it wouldn't go into the case properly until I just enlarged the, the mounting hole. Uh, I'm going to show you a contact here. Now, bear in mind this QRM here and uh, etc. But this is a contact with a, a, a guy in uh, Croatia, 9 Alpha 2 November. So uh, here we go. He was calling CQ. You can see how reasonably well it copies the CW. Good evening, you 599 operator data. How? How copy? Now I'm going back to him. Fine business and thank you for call RST five nine nine and uh, you know you can see how well it, how, how how well the contact uh, went. Uh, now I'm just going to do a bit of advertising. Uh, I have a, a QRP, an EI QRP and homebrew page, and uh, part of my enjoyment is uh, making uh, uh, small videos and putting them up of my, my projects. There are lots of them up there. I think I've 60 in all. And uh, all you, if, you, if you want to subscribe, all you have to do is go into uh, into YouTube and just put in my call sign EI for EVM, and uh, there you go. I also uh, have a a DI QRP whole brew Facebook group, and uh, there you go. There, anyone that's it's it's not confined to EIs, and uh, anyone can. I don't know many many followers I have that. When I took that there, there was 566 members. So I'd say there are a few more at this stage. Uh, I'm down there, I, I have the, the, the stand there, but here, here's one I had at an IRTS uh, uh, meeting. Uh, I think it was an AGM in a clone a few years ago. But uh, it's almost similar, it's almost identical to what's there. Now, another advertisement. The Hordy Gordy Museum of Vintage Radio in Hoth. Uh, well worth a visit. I maintain the station there, EI Zero M A R, and uh, it's, it's it's housed in a Martello Tower, but it's crammed with uh, paraphernalia of the early days of uh, of radio or wireless, as it was then in Ireland, and the first uh, uh, submarine cable came in to the actual tower itself in, uh, it was 1852. It lasted for two weeks until the salt water got in at it. And uh, it had to be replaced and didn't become serviceable permanently until, uh, until 1854. And uh, you can see there just an EI 3CTB during International Marconi Day. There were two, uh, Wireless pioneers operated from the, the, the tower. First was Lee De Forest, uh, who was an American inventor uh, and wireless. Uh, he, he, he came over to try and peddle his radio system, a wireless system, to the British Post Office at the time. But the poor guy, he was American. And Marconi, uh, whose mother was Irish and who was fairly rich and had all the, the business connections in London. So uh, through that, 
they got the contract with the British Post Office. There was a, an inquiry held in 1912 as to the awarding of the, uh, of the contract, but by that time, the Marconi Company was up and running. But anyway, that's a, a by the way. And uh, there we have the museum. Uh, you can see it on the hill overlooking the harbour, uh, Holt Harbour and Holt Harbour below. So it's open every day, uh, 11 o'clock till 4, 4 o'clock. And uh, there's the email address. So if any of you are in Dublin or even want to make a special visit there, uh, just email me in advance and I'll make sure that I'll be there to to see you and give you the, uh, what did I say, the $128 tour. So there you go. Uh, so that's it. Uh, thanks to everyone there. And uh, I hope I've given a few ideas uh, there. Uh, as I said, the main, th main thing I'm going to say is homebrew is a, you know, for me it is uh, QRP and it's a great great way to get into the QRP and the construction because kits are very cheap as as you said Les, three pound like where could you go wrong and your your feedback there online or whatever would be appreciated my email address is quite easy to remember there it's ei5emtony at gmail.com and what I'm going to do there is I'm going to go back down and uh, put, put this little kit back on the, on the table. So if anyone has any questions there, uh, they can either address, address me now or, or, or come down to the, uh, uh, the, 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 the display later on. So thanks to everybody there and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay.